You think Reebok? Oh, yeah. Nick. We don't have favourites, but you're right up there, oh, mate. thanks. Yeah. You're right up there. Who else is on the list? Ah, oh, there's a few. I say yeah, that's right. It's everyone. a big list. You so. know, I don't, I don't want anyone to feel as though they're actually, not our favourite. I actually don't feel that special now. <laughs> <laughs> you should. Oh, you are. Um, it's pointy end of the season. It is. It's about as pointy as it gets, apart from one other week. Yeah. It is, and uh, something about prelims. I mean, every, everyone's spoken about it all week that they're they're the purest week of footy. Mm. Um, well, normally when when you know when we've got a big one at uh, at the MCG, it's it's all the real supporters, all the real members. So there's not that corporate flavour that we get on grand final day. So very fortunate to have been a part of a number of prelims across the journey, winning and losing ones. Mm. Um, and it's the the next week, the contrast in the next week. You're either having the worst week of your footballing life. Mm. In a way, it's it's almost worse than post losing a grand final mm. because the grand final finishes and then it's footy season over and it's sort of done. Yeah. Whereas to sit and watch the other teams go In about preparing for a grand final and mm. the pro and all the things that are wrapped around it, it's um it's a week of hell. It's a week of hell, or it's the greatest experience of your footballing life because you're preparing to play in a grand final, which is which is the ultimate. Well, we've ended up with the uh, well, almost the top four, apart from the Bulldogs, um, who were pretty much there anyway. You know, at round mm. twenty, Will was it round twenty? You had this stat last round, week. Oh yeah, they were top of the ladder round twenty, but go. then they were only round twenty three. They missed by seven points. That's the top it. Four, so. Um, Melbourne Geelong tonight feels like it could be one of the classics. It does, doesn't it? And and I, I think the the fascination on this one uh, almost lies in the fallout for the side that doesn't quite get it done. I know. Um, oh, so could we you imagine you know, the Melbourne fans. We're taking a bit of a glass half empty sort of approach to it, but um, <laughs> no, for for Melbourne, this is as good as it's looked for them in in fifty years. Uh, which which is so exciting for all of those those Melbourne fans. I mean, you feel for the feel for them because they they're not going to well, not too many of them are going to be able to get there live. But um, you just get the feeling that that this this Melbourne team they have a bit of a sense of destiny about them at the moment. The mm. way the way they've gone about it, the the style of footy that they're playing really stacks up in September. It's sort of that imperfect style that that doesn't really get affected too much by the pressure and you contrast that with the cats who who like to play the control game which has stood them in such good stead uh but it's uh you know it's come unstuck the last couple of years for them they're on the edge of the cliff i think geelong mm. with what they've done recruiting wise they've gone so hard at um at you know just topping up topping up topping up they've mm. got a really old list mm. it's a bit of I think this is a bit of now or never. There's a couple of old counts. warriors rolling around in there, isn't there? They um, are, yeah. Melbourne merch through the roof, um, and then I heard a bloke uh, talking about them on the radio through the week. They've only got 55,000 members. I thought they'd have more than that. I don't know why I thought they'd have more than that. I thought they were a bigger club than that. Yeah, they're, they're an older club. Mm. I, I don't think we, we should confuse the, the old and, and the history with, with the, the size. And I mean, it, it probably goes, um, well, it probably stands to reason given their lack of, of success over recent years. I mean, mm. you look at all the, the really big clubs, um, you know, Richmond have, have obviously had recent success, Collingwood the same, um, Hawthorne the same. So yeah, look, I, I, I just think that that adds another layer to the story that it's one of the one of the smaller clubs there. You know, Port Adelaide are, are not the biggest club in their own town. Um, they might be the best club in their own town, but they're not the biggest. But tonight's tonight's Christmas. Yeah, it's really. great. Isn't tonight's it? Christmas for a footy fan, and I'm just so excited to cover it tonight for Fox. Big great. night for you, Melbourne, Geelong, and then of course Saturday night, Port v Bulldogs. Yeah, another beauty. The, the Port Adelaide. Uh, you know, we spoke about Melbourne being as well placed as they've ever been. This is this is this is a bit of deja vu for Port Adelaide. They had the home prelim last year against the Tigers, couldn't quite get it done. They, they were really good, but they get the dogs at a time when they're you know they're banged up the yeah. Bulldogs. So the news, Alex Keith yesterday has gone out of that side is a massive loss for them. He's been he's been enormous this year, underrated. Mm. Um, he would have played on Charlie Dixon. Uh, we know Bontempelli's under a bit of a cloud. You still expect him to play. I mean, most players at this stage would be. Carrying something, um, and I've always thought you can you can you can do what you need to do for two hours. Mm. You know, w- with a niggle, whatever it is, you just screw yourself up as tight as you can for two hours. Go out and get it done, and then worry about 
um, worry about sort of getting through the next week, which is actually two weeks now, mm. which is a uh, which is a bonus for for those guys. But how do you stop yourself on a day like today if you're Melbourne or Geelong or tomorrow one of the other teams mentally playing the game? Hours and hours and hours before kickoff. Yeah, I spoke to Jeremy Cameron during the week. He had a pretty good, uh, he had a pretty good um, take on that, and he just sleeps in till eleven a.m. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So he just eases yeah, good. into the morning, cup yeah. of joe, <laughs> yeah, a couple know. of crumpets. <laughs> oh, but, but what I wanted to know was, what does your night before look like? To allow you to actually sleep in till eleven a.m. Because that wasn't um, part of your personality. No, nah, not really. A bit more highly not struck. Really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just tucked up in bed, laying on my back, you know, yeah. uh, staring uh, at the roof, uh, staring at the roof at seven thirty p.m. Thinking he'll do this, I'll do that. Yeah. What happens if? Yeah. Um, that's the hardest thing as a player is to not to play those those games in your head. What if? Mm. What if we win? What if we lose? What if this happens? What if? What Are if you I'm... feeling aggressive when you're going through that thought process? You're thinking, I'm going to whack this bloke. If I can, not not aggressive. No, no, nah, not 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 aggressive. I mean, the games, the games, sort of. I'm sure back in the day, you know, that would have been the, the thing. It was probably more, what if, what if I have a, what if I have a quiet start? How do I, how do I oh, right. not let that affect, affect you for me? the whole game? Yeah, so almost play the play the mental game in your head where okay, it's quarter time and I've had I haven't touched the footy. How am I going to react? So when you if it, so if it happens, you've actually already answered the question yourself mm. and you just keep digging in and, and you keep working. Um love love the final, you know, Adelaide Oval. We're going to have a crowd there. It, it it's going to be awesome as as a spectacle as well. Reminds me we we played a prelim um 2004 against Port Adelaide. So the first prelim I, I played in which was out at Footy Park. Mm. And they'd what had a hell hole that oh, job yeah. was. Yeah, no, wow. <laughs> the, 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 steel where, bench where you, yeah, that's it. it. And foul. where you would run out, you had sort of the, the the cage over the top of you where the supporters mm. could lean in and they could give you a serve, give you a serve, or throw s- wee on you. Yeah, or, or spit oh. or, or whatever it Calling might be. Calling trick. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a role with that trick? <laughs> no, I haven't. In the haven't cup. needed it here yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> You could just lob it down onto Clarendon Street. That yes. would work well. Beware. Um, but uh, we, so we played Port Adelaide and Fraser Gehrig was on like 98 goals for the year. And we got off to a cracking start. We kicked the first few and then Fraser's lining up for his hundredth. And we were just pleading like, you know, p- please St Kilda supporters. Don't run on when he kicks his hundredth because we've got all the momentum. You know, we're yeah. all over Port Adelaide. Well, he goes back, he kicks his hundredth. Out come the crowd. So, so we gather around the big G train and he's, you know, he wasn't really a fan of sort of, mm. you know, the adulation and all that sort of stuff. So you understand supporters run out. Anyway, we're in the middle of footy park and I look over and there's Stevie Baker, one of my teammates, having a conversation with his old man in the middle of footy park. So all the, all the nuffy supporters that ran on, Bakes' old man was one of them. And they're and having was, a chat. They're just having a chat in oh, the middle of hilarious. footy park. So we're ripping into him. Greggy Baker, get off the field, mate. We're trying to win a prelim. <laughs> Unbelievable scenes. But um, we went on to lose that one subsequently. Oh, yeah, which geez. is uh, nice to nice to back over old wounds. But nah, it, it's it's great. Like this is this is just it's shaped up beautifully. I know the Bulldogs have come from outside the top four, but I really do think we've got the best four teams from the year playing off in in the prelims, which is mm, perfect. It's going to be a wonderful weekend. Enjoy it, Nick. Thanks, guys. Chat you next week. <laughs> Shear Gold Show, Triple M.